This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com. Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video. Have you come across a setting in your camera menu called Picture Styles or Picture Profiles and wondered what that was all about? In this video, I'm going to explain what picture profiles are and three reasons why both JPEG and RAW shooters should understand how they work and how to change them. If you stay to the end, I'll share how RAW shooters can adjust their picture profiles to have a more accurate histogram so you can capture tricky lighting scenarios like this one without blowing out your highlights. My name is Simon Dantremont and I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for wildlife and nature photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. So let's start off by describing what picture profiles or picture styles are so later things will make sense. Most cameras shoot in at least two main formats, RAW and JPEG. RAW is the equivalent of your digital negative, that is the RAW data captured by your camera with little to no processing done to it. A JPEG is a more compressed and smaller file size version of your RAW, but which has had a number of adjustments like noise reduction, contrast, sharpening or saturation boost done to it to improve its look. A picture profile or picture style is the group of adjustments that are to be made in creating that JPEG. Different camera brands have different names for picture profiles. On a Canon, it's called Picture Styles. On a Nikon, Picture Controls. On a Sony, Creative Style. On a Fuji, Film Simulation. On Panasonic, Photo Style. Olympus, it's Picture Profile. And on a Pentax, Custom Image Profile. You can change them by looking up these profiles in the camera menus. Note that on some camera brands, there may be two picture profile settings available, one for photo and a different one for video. Now let's look at the three reasons you should care about picture styles. The first and most obvious way that picture styles affect your photos is if you shoot in JPEG. That means that your photos coming from your camera already have processing adjustments applied to them, dictated by the picture profile chosen. In your menus, you can change these profiles to better suit your style of photography, as the profiles are usually designed to be more flattering to certain styles of photography. For example, in portrait photography, photographers usually prefer soft skin tones, so the portrait picture profile won't have aggressive sharpening, or may even have effects like low contrast that reduce the perceived sharpness, making skin look softer. Landscape photography can be flattered by vibrant greens and blues, colors often found in nature. As such, those profiles might intentionally increase saturation in these colors. You can experiment with these profiles by shooting the same photo using different profiles and comparing the photos. Which one looks best to you? You can even customize the profiles to your liking by tweaking the individual adjustments within each profiles on many cameras. By the way, shooting in both RAW and JPEG at the same time is a great option. Your camera will record both the processed JPEG and the unprocessed RAW. If the JPEG looks great to you straight out of camera, go ahead and use that. But if the JPEG has issues like over or under exposure, or the colors or the white balance don't look right, use the RAW and process it to taste, as RAWs have a greater ability to be altered for those changes. Now, if we're going to spend all this effort to get the best image quality out of your photos, don't we owe it to them to show them off at their best? That's where a website comes in, and a great time to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. As many social media platforms move more and more into video as a trend rather than photography, I think having a website is more important than ever. We need a place where we can showcase our work in fine detail rather than small thumbnails which don't show off all the work that went into a photo or is favoring video content over your photos. I built my own website using Squarespace and it was a breeze. They have lots of templates for you to choose from or even templates designed for certain genres like photography. If you want to get even more creative, you can go outside the templates and design your own pages from scratch with tools for adding text, video clips, photos, and links to other parts of your website. Not only is this a great way to display your work, you can monetize it with your own online store, and you can take payments via credit card or PayPal from all over the world. You can even send clients invoices too. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Simon to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The second reason to care about picture profiles is that they affect the image on the back LCD and on a mirrorless camera in the electronic viewfinder. That's because the photo that shows up on your camera for you to see isn't the RAW, 
but a JPEG your camera has made to be viewed, even if you shoot in RAW. Now you may be saying, I shoot in RAW and will process the RAW image, so why should I care about what the image looks like on the back LCD? There are a couple of reasons you might. One, viewing what your photo will look like closer to what the process final will be is very helpful in helping you visualize the photo you want. If your goal is to capture a beautiful sunset, but your JPEG on the LCD looks flat and lifeless, even after having been processed, maybe you don't have the right angle or maybe you don't have the right settings to get the photo you want. This gives you a chance to reevaluate your shot before taking the photo, as opposed to only finding out there was a problem when you get home. Secondly, having the right picture profile settings allows you to emphasize the attributes that are important to you on the back LCD so that you can evaluate them in the field more carefully. For example, when photographing wildlife, I often come across issues that affect sharpness like heat haze or high humidity above water, like in this scenario. I want to check the sharpness to see if I need to change anything, but unless I have the sharpness high on the picture profile, close inspection of my photo won't show me how sharp the photo is, as RAWs are inherently a bit soft. Like in this example, I was shooting these ring neck ducks with my lens only inches above the water as I had my lens hood rested against my foot and using the back flippy screen to frame the shot. I checked the back LCD after taking a few shots and found that the photos were soft, even with my custom profile with extra sharpness and clarity. As such, I then knew this wasn't working. But I knew from personal experience that when photos are soft from shooting low inches above water, Raising the camera a foot or two above the water will get above some of this humidity and haze and yield sharper shots. So that's what I did and voila, a better photo, even if my whole workflow is in RAW. So what does this mean for you? What is the main attribute you like to evaluate when looking at the back LCD and how do you set that attribute in picture profiles to help you with your evaluation of that feature in the photo? By the way, check me out on Facebook and Instagram where I almost always give a photography tip with every post. And if you go to my website and sign up for my email list, you can download my free guide on shooting in backlit situations. Link below. The third reason you should care about picture profiles, even as a raw shooter, has to do with the accuracy of your histogram and ability to get the exposure right in camera. The issue at play here is that we use the back LCD, electronic viewfinders and mirrorless cameras, as well as the all important histogram to judge exposure and get the shot right. The problem is those are all based on the JPEG, not the raw. This means that when your blinkies or highlight alerts blink, or your histogram has your whites touching on the right hand side showing overexposure, it's not really happening in the original RAW photo. It may only be happening on your JPEG. Your RAW file has more dynamic range than your JPEG, but you don't have a way of knowing how much more you have to play with, or do you? It turns out that in many cases, JPEGs have had contrast or clarity applied, which usually translate to raising whites and lowering blacks, which is stretching your histogram farther right and left. Here's a photo of mine and see what happens to the histogram when I add contrast. It stretches the histogram, adding the risk of clipping. So images with contrast added in the picture profiles will clip earlier. So my advice here for raw shooters is whatever picture profile you choose, reduce the clarity and contrast adjustments, what we call a flatter profile. You can still pick your profile that looks the best for your photos, just go in and tweak it for less contrast. While this may make the JPEG flatter than you'd like on the back LCD, it will improve the accuracy of your histogram and make it easier to judge exposure. If you shoot JPEG, this will allow you to better preserve the highlights. You can always add contrast back and processing later if you can do it without clipping. If you shoot in a genre where showing the client the back LCD is part of the work, you need to evaluate if having the photos look a little bit flat on the back LCD is undermining the perception of your work's quality. To note, if you want to get really accurate histograms, you can set your camera to RGB histograms as each color won't clip at the same time. Now, even if your workflow doesn't work well for using this technique, you can still put this knowledge to good use. You now know that when your blinkies flash, your raw photo has a bit more dynamic range than what you see. That means you can have slight blinkies in your photos and can still recover those highlights by lowering the highlights or whites just a bit in processing. If all this talk about the look of photos has you thinking about processing photos to get the look you want, check out my video on how to rescue lifeless photos using my favorite post-processing tricks right here. 
If you thought this video deserving, give it a like and YouTube will show it to even more photographers, helping them advance their own photography. And I hope you can use these tips to go out and get your own unique and amazing photos and in the best picture profile for you. I know you can do it.